Greetings, greetings. It's your boy, Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. And if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. Okay, this episode right here, the reason why I'm wearing this, this episode is for the people that have to wear this when they're on camera because of the things they do behind the scenes. And we're going to see the breakdowns between a snitch and a federal informant. The differences, why people get confused, and some of these people are making millions of dollars. Let's get into it. Arrest of a suspect considered a major drug kingpin. This is LAPD. We have a search warrant. Come on down with your hands up. The LAPD took Derek Turner into custody. The operation authority seized nearly $1.8 million in cash, plus guns and several pounds of cocaine, meth, and heroin. With all my information, we'll be in a case, that's for sure. Authorities say Turner was a big time dealer who primarily focused on Skid Row. This man says he has worked as a paid informant for the LAPD for more than 20 years. What? Ah! So I risked my life after the recovery is the 10% or the seizures, the money, plus any weapon or any drug that they seize. He works Skid Row gathering information to help detectives bust drug dealers and says he normally receives 10% of the cash recovered. Man, you got me thinking back. Under that agreement, he claims the LAPD owes him $210,000 for the raid. What? He's upset because he hasn't been paid. I don't know why they fight too much when I'm entitled to the 10%. But I believe the responsible is the chief, Chief Beck, and Mr. Gazzetti. The informant filed a complaint with the LAPD's Internal Affairs Unit that was ruled unfounded in a letter signed by Chief Charlie Beck earlier this year. Now he's preparing to take legal action. That's what I want to get paid, you know, because I did the job. They know. Understand there is a difference between a confidential informant and a cooperating witness. Someone that agrees to be a witness is someone that is prepared to go to the mat to testify at the end of the day. Confidential informants are people that stay in the shadows, that feed information to proactive police officers, that give information that could help change someone's life. At the end of the day, these street cops need to go out and corroborate what the confidential informant is saying before they take any action. They have to observe things happen, articulate what happened, and then take action. They cannot take action just based upon what that confidential informant said alone. Okay, that's a good question. Wake up. So generally, this is how it kind of works. The FBI doesn't just do surveillance, right? They do have informants. Not necessarily FBI employees. It might be individuals working on behalf of the FBI. What they do is they might find suspects or might find individuals on particular cases they're trying to build. A lot of times, they need informants to build that case. I'll give you a good example with my case. Now, even though I was only convicted of a firearm possession, there were allegations of, like, radical ideology. So what they did was they put this Arab girl, an informant. She spoke the language. She knew the religion. She was trying to get me to say things that, you know, I don't want to say. So more often or not, you're already kind of on their radar. They don't have it. They don't have too much on you. They want more, so they put these informants. For example, I was in prison with a biker club. They had individuals who were in the biker club as informants. I had, there were doctors in prison. They had patients and medical staff. So overall, a lot of these guys are either wearing wires or monitoring you in some way. One of your friends is actually a paid informant, and I'm about to teach you how to figure out who. What you need to understand is there's actually levels to tattletaling. The first level is being a snitch. So a snitch will commit a crime with you, know the consequences, and then get caught. And when they get caught, they get scared into telling. Now, even though that is shysty and I do not co-sign it, that is not nearly as bad as being an informant. See, an informant will actually persuade you to do a crime, and then before the crime is committed, the police already know about the crime. If you are suspecting someone of being an informant, you have to pay very close attention to what they say, not just what they say, but what they act. Now, some guys who are actually in the streets, they just talk too much. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're an informant. For instance, one day you might be dealing with a dude who you know is broke, that you only serve little amounts to, and then out of thin air, he wants to sell you three blit. That right there, that's suspect. And it's a red flag. And it's probably also a federal informant. Stay away from that guy. Another scenario could be that you have committed a crime with an individual. Not the same bogus half-gram guy, but a different guy, right? 
and he wants to keep bringing it up. You'll just be kicking it with dude, then out of nowhere, they'll want to bring up three months ago how you and him committed barnyard sodomy. At that point, you have to tell him, no, I do not know what you're talking about. And then you want to reach and lift up his shirt and look for a wire. Now, this is the last and probably the best way to tell if someone is an informant. They will always want you to come to them when meeting to commit a crime. They're never going to come to you. They're never going to meet you at the Sonic, the Waffle House, the McDonald's. They want you to come to them. I said all that to say this. The streets are not safe. You get a job. If you're a violent guy today on the street, violent, you're either an informant, okay, that the feds know what you're doing, and you can be violent like Greg Scarpa. They called him uh, the Grim Reaper in Brooklyn. He killed over 80 guys, 70, 80 guys. killed 70, 80 guys that they know. He was an informant for 30 years, like Whitey Bulger, the guy in wow, Boston. Of course, and they just let you keep killing. They're not going to say to you, kill this one, kill that one. They're not going to do that. But he had, go on the internet, it's all out there. It's not like I'm giving secrets. He would walk in a social club. If somebody accused him of something he didn't like, he'd shoot you right in the head in front of the whole social club. And everybody was saying, oh my God, he's crazy. No, he ain't crazy, he was an informant. Yeah. That's a fact. Facts, facts. That's a fact. You say what you right. <laughs> <laughs> when I got out of prison, the FBI wanted me to be a federal informant. That's right. So if you have been following my story and my case, you know that I was a suspected terrorist. However, there was no evidence or charges ever levied against me because I didn't do nothing. But anyway, I go to a halfway house and then a week goes by in that halfway house. They say, hey, you have a meeting. And lo and behold, who is it? The same two FBI agents who interrogated me, investigated me when the first went down. What? They sat down with me, wanted to see where my head was at, what was going on, and they say, hey, we have a proposition for you. We have an opportunity for you. We would like for you to take advantage of. We would like for you to work with us to be a profiler, to kind of just let us know what a terrorist is thinking, some warning signs so we can help them. After a while, we will put you out on the field. They gave me these nice little incentives to even take if I took this opportunity, like some money, a book deal, to get on TED Talk, all these nice little promises, right? And they say, hey, if you don't take this, we'll continue to investigate you, your family. We are going to make your life a living hell. I'll, I'll go because, okay, here's a good way for me to do it. Like, we'll come back in a week and see if you're going to take this deal or not. I go run and get a civil rights attorney. She said, oh, no, we're not going for this. We're going to make a storm out this. We're going to go to the media. And she contacted the FBI. She said, the next time you ever want to talk to me, you got to go through her first. They end up leaving me alone after a while. It took for me to get a civil rights attorney. But that was insane. It was crazy. I don't know your man's an informant part 87 always talking about how real he is and all the things he's done. He's been caught three times for trafficking and I've been done any time. When you hear from the streets that he's a rat, he's probably a rat. When he says that he's been in the game for 20 years, flexes that he's never been bagged. When he makes the youngins run his bag, he only comes for one. He only comes for two. He's asking where you get it from. Go hit the plug with the, man I'm telling you, we go way back. Then he hits you with the, I never do that to you, bro. You're like my brother. That's a fact. And the person who brings him to your circle most likely knew that he was an informant. He got caught with a firearm, some work, multiple times, and only did five years. That sounds sus. And most importantly, if the streets say he is snitch, he probably is snitch. Hey, listen. If you in these streets, take heed when a confidential informant show you favor and spare you. And what I'm saying, like back back when I was hustling, right, it was a guy named Te Terry. I ain't gonna say his last name. Uh, a, a white guy. Man, he bust. It, it had to be 15 dudes in the county that he did he did control buys on, right? And um, everybody had to deal with Terry, man. And then I was the one of I was one of, one of the dudes that he spared. You know what I mean? But back then. I had that better, better them than me attitude. Because if I would have took heed to man, this is how the game go. When all those dudes fell, knowing that I done dealt with the dude that didn't bust me and bust everybody else, I should have took heed to that confidence informant that's bad. So to you dudes out there, right? It's gonna be some people that's working for the, for the police that don't get you. It's gonna be some people that spare you. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they're afraid of you. Maybe you done been good to them. Maybe you related to him. Whatever the case may be, it's going to be some dudes. It's going to be some confidential informants that's going to spare you and not do you in, right? But if you take that better them than me approach, you take that better, better them 
than me attitude, you're going to keep on hustling, and it's going to be somebody that's not going to spare you. Oh, yeah. You know, so, yo, if you're young, if you out here in these streets, when stuff happens in your city, when all the soldiers fall and you still standing, oh, don't feel lucky. Don't feel lucky. You know what I'm saying? Because, be, be, because your luck going to run out, so don't feel lucky. Take heed, get your money and run. Remember, like I always tell you guys, the streets is not safe, it's not worth it, there's no love, there's no love out there, you can't trust people out there. You never know who's working for who, and if you put money into play, it can happen to you. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel, subscribe, like.